Greetings, listeners. You know, last week, I found myself wandering through the aisles of a local bookstore. As I made my way around to the religion section, I stumbled upon a sight that left me utterly astounded. Before me stood an entire wall filled with Bibles of every shape, size, and material imaginable. From petite little pocket editions to massive volumes, from sleek leather-bound covers to humble paperbacks, the array of options seemed endless. And as I looked closer, I realized that they were not just different shapes and sizes or different translations, but different types of Bibles. Types? What are these variations, these types, and and how does one even begin to choose? This was a Bible lover's dream, (laughs) but a decision maker's nightmare. I needed help. Do you? Well, stay tuned to this episode of the Bible Basics Podcast, where we'll shed light on the various types of Bibles available and share practical tips for discerning Which one is right for you? Well, welcome, everyone. I'm your host, Jackie Adewale, and this is the Bible Basics Podcast, where weekly we break down the Bible into understandable, bite-sized chunks. We're focused on Bible study this season, and the one thing we need, no matter what approach to study we take, we need a Bible. But which one? There are so many, and I'm not talking about translations. We addressed translations in a previous episode. The link is in the show notes. No, I mean all the other variations or types of Bibles. Let's take a look at the 10 most common categories most Bibles fit in. I'll give you a short explanation of what it is, and discuss why you might want to use this particular Bible. Number one, let's begin with one of the most iconic types of Bibles, the study Bible. Study Bibles are like having a personal guide alongside scripture. They include features designed to assist us in understanding the text and its significance. These features typically include explanatory notes that are written by scholars and theologians. They provide insights into the historical context, cultural background, and theological interpretations of passages. These Bibles include cross-references to related passages in the Bible, which allow readers to explore interconnected themes and concepts. Study Bibles also feature maps, charts, and illustrations to help readers visualize geographical locations, timelines, and other relevant information. You all know I love a good timeline. Additionally, some study Bibles include a concordance, which is an alphabetical index of keywords and their corresponding passages in the Bible. When choosing a study Bible, there are several important considerations to keep in mind to ensure that it meets your needs and preferences. First, consider which translation of the Bible is used for the study Bible. Is it NIV, New King James, ESV, and so on? If the study Bible is not your primary Bible, you'll probably want your study Bible to be the same translation as your primary Bible, so you can easily use them together. I hope that made sense. (laughs) Now, this is very important. Study Bibles may reflect specific theological traditions or perspectives. Some study Bibles are geared towards particular denominations. Be aware of the perspective represented and ensure that it aligns with your beliefs and preferences. For insights on this, ask your pastor, your Sunday school teacher, or other leader in your church. 
There's some study Bibles that focus on a particular audience. Common examples are study Bibles for men, study Bibles for women, study Bibles for leaders. Those are a few examples. They help the reader interpret scripture through these lenses. Finally, choose a format and a layout that you will find comfortable to read, whether it's a traditional print edition, a digital ebook, or an online resource. Pay attention to factors such as font size, page layout, and navigational features. Not all study Bibles have the same pattern, but their common goal is to help every reader have a deeper understanding of the text. Just for information, I use two study Bibles consistently, the John MacArthur Study Bible and the Tony Evans Study Bible. Number two, another type of Bible is the text Bible, also referred to as a reader's Bible or a plain Bible. They contain only the biblical text and have almost no extra features like the study Bibles. There may be translators' footnotes, but that's it. For the text Bible, specifically called a reader's Bible, it doesn't even have chapter and verse numbers. These text Bibles are often in a small or slim format, so they're suitable for slipping into your pocket or bag and taking with you to work, to church, or any place you might have time to read. My 90-day Bible is a text Bible. Number three. This is a Bible format that was relatively new to me. It's called a note-taking Bible or journaling Bible. They're designed with thicker paper, so your markings won't bleed through to the next page. They also have wide margins with enough space to write notes, reflections, and hand-drawn illustrations. Many include journaling prompts. If you haven't seen how people use these Bibles, go to YouTube and do a search on Bible journaling. It's so interesting to see how Bible readers express their understanding of God's Word with their artistic creativity. Number four. Now let's talk about another intriguing type, the Illustrated Bible. Visual learners, rejoice. (laughs) Illustrated Bibles combine the power of storytelling with captivating artwork. From intricate illustrations to vibrant depictions of biblical scenes, these Bibles bring the stories to life in a whole new way. They're perfect for sparking imagination and engaging readers of all ages. I actually have one called the Action Bible. It beautifully illustrates in full color the narratives of God's Word. Number five. Moving on, we have the Devotional Bible. Devotional Bibles are designed to foster spiritual growth and reflection. They often include daily readings, prayers, and reflections tailored to specific themes, topics, or place in life. There are versions of these Bibles aimed at couples, men, women, athletes, recovering addicts, leaders, small group members, and more. Whether you're seeking inspiration, encouragement, or a deeper connection with your faith, devotional Bibles provide a structured framework for personal devotion and contemplation. One of my favorites was a birthday gift called the Everyday Life Bible. The devotional material is in it is authored by Joyce Meyer. Number six, it may be argued that this next Bible type is actually a translation and not a type of Bible, but I'm going to list it anyway, because it's often overlooked. And this is the Bible in other languages. Scripture has been translated into about 3,600 languages. For some people, that means a complete Bible. For some, a New Testament. For others, scripture portions and stories. 
In addition to written versions, both print and digital, there are a number of related products, including videos and audio recordings. The Bible Museum actually has an exhibit that tracks these Bibles. I'm most familiar with the ASLV, or the American Sign Language Version Bible. It's found at deafbible.com. This visual Bible makes God's Word accessible to the half million people for whom ASL is their heart language. Number seven. Next up, let's explore the Chronological Bible. Ever wondered what it would be like to experience the events of the Bible in chronological order? Well, wonder no more. Chronological Bibles rearrange the traditional order of books and passages to present the narrative in a more linear timeline. It's like embarking on a chronological journey through Bible history. It offers fresh insights into the interconnectedness of the stories and events of the Bible. You know my obsession with Bible timelines, so you know I love this sort of Bible. I plan to use one this year, or next year, for my reading through the Bible in a year. We're almost at the end. Number eight. The first Bible I was given when I was baptized as an adult was a parallel Bible. This unique Bible edition features more than one Bible translation side by side on the same page, such as NIV, King James Version, NASB, and Amplified. They might have, uh, depending on the size of the font, it might be two columns on the left hand, the page on the left, and then the page on the right might have the other two columns, but they're side by side. It allows you to compare the same scripture text in multiple translations to gain a fuller sense of the meaning of the text. Another Bible that might be considered a parallel Bible is the interlinear, I always had trouble pronouncing this one, the interlinear Bible. This Bible shows the English Bible text alongside the original Hebrew or Greek. Number nine, I'm calling this category of Bibles the Daily Bible. If you're interested in reading the Bible or portions of the Bible every day, this one is for you. Of course, if you already own a Bible, you might find a reading plan in the back of the Bible or online and use that as a guide. But if you want to use this version of the Bible that's specifically designed around daily readings, this is the one. The most common type is called the one-year Bible. Here, God's Word is divided into 365 daily readings to help you read through the entire Bible in a year. There is also the 90-day Bible, which is divided into readings to get you through God's Word in three short months. There are many others that are designed to encourage readers by helping them walk through the entire Bible at a more manageable pace. And now number 10. I want to conclude this list with a very valuable reference Bible. Reference Bibles help the reader see how the scriptures are interconnected. They have cross references on the pages with the biblical text to help the reader locate other passages with the same or related words phrases, topics, and themes. They have much more than study Bibles have. They can also show where something was quoted from or alluded to. Online versions of these Bibles are amazing to use. One I'm learning to use is the Thompson Chain Bible. Another reference Bible is the Open Bible, published by Thomas Nelson. I have the Kindle edition of this Bible, and I discover new features every time I open it. And there you have it, dear listeners, a glimpse into the diverse world of Bibles beyond translations. Whether you're a novice or a scholar, each of these types of Bibles offer valuable insights and context. 
from study Bibles to text to note-taking, illustrated Bibles, devotional Bibles, to Bibles in other languages, and chronological Bibles, parallel Bibles, and daily Bibles to reference Bibles. There's a type of Bible to suit every need and preference. So whether you're seeking knowledge, inspiration, or spiritual growth, remember the world of Bibles is vast and varied, waiting to be explored. Think about the specific purpose and focus of your reading or study. Are you looking for Bibles for just reading, personal study, devotions, inspiration, academic study, teaching, or general reference? By considering these factors, you can select Bibles that align with your intended use and provide the depth of content and resources that you need. The ultimate goal is to choose a Bible or Bibles that suit your current need as you grow in your faith and understanding of God's Word. If you found this episode helpful, informative, or inspirational in any way, would you please share with someone you know who needs to hear it? You can do that by sharing the podcast website, bible-basics.org, or you can click on the share button right where you're listening now. For those of you listening on YouTube, go ahead and like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. In closing, May the grace and peace of God be with you now and always.